All right. Welcome to another edition of Vegas Bad Boys of Podcasting. I'm your host, DJ Impact, and I got some of the bad boys here with me. Thanks for being here. King Lucky, Sin City Steve, and Matt Michaels. You know what? It's <laughs> it, I think that motherfucker lied to us. Yeah. I don't think he got the commitment. The fucking Saints are playing right now. Oh. oh. That's exactly what it is. So if they lose again, then he won't have to cry on, on air. Yeah, yeah. At least yeah, at least we don't have to hear the bitching about it this week. Next yeah. Week. You no, know, that's we'll what we call just have to hear, we'll just have to hear King Lucky bitch about the Cowboys. You know what? Cowboys. Going, I'll be honest, going into this week, I knew we were gonna lose this one. Just checking in to see if y'all are still damn boys. We still them boys. We still them boys, baby. If you really want, if you really want to be honest, you should be thinking like that every single week. Nah, nah. But I knew <laughs> I knew this one was gonna be tough. So Yeah. Well, my Raiders didn't do too well either, but it's okay. But you and know what? Raiders All on the weekend was not lost for me as my Lakers are the Western Conference champions. So mm-hmm. I, you know, a little bittersweet because my Cowboys didn't win, but the Lakers. Okay. And, if, and if we win, I'm going to L.A. for the parades, all properly social distanced. <laughs> That's just impossible. There will be no <laughs> virtual there parade. Par- there will not be a parade, man. There will be a parade. <laughs> Yeah, you and fucking Wino Chuck on uh, Fifth Street and Figueroa fucking going, hey, hey, I think that was a Laker. Hey, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That's good stuff, man. Guys, welcome to the show. We are just wrapping up WWE Clash of Champions. All titles were on the line tonight. And overall, it was a it was a decent show. It was all right. Um you know, let's get right into it. Of course, the pre-show kicked right off. And first off, let me welcome all of our uh, listeners that are on our Facebook live feed. And uh, also, we want to shout out Periscope, YouTube, and Twitch uh, viewers as well. Uh, we want to uh, welcome you and thank you for, for being a part of our uh, podcast live show as well. And if you're on the Facebook live feed, feel free to throw in the comments. And as we uh, get the opportunity, we will try to uh, put some of those comments here online. Back to the show. The pre-show will start off with the Lucha House Party. Yeah! <laughs> okay. Mm. Versus uh, Shinsuke and Cesaro. You know, I... I and, we, and yes, Shinsuke and Cesaro won the match. I, I thought maybe they were going to continue maybe this, what, breakup that they're having between uh, the group there, but they just kind of let that fly eh? is that kind of how we should look at that and they it was just supposed to be a quick match and that's it i guess they'll they'll go back into that on uh, smackdown again i didn't see it yeah but yeah yeah it was just yeah, it, yeah. It, they really didn't play too much into that so I don't imagine know. that lucky <laughs> not watching a match involving cruiserweights <laughs> right yeah, but lucky he's got a boner for cesaro so <laughs> that is true <laughs> I just I just want to know which one is Ray? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Neither one. Shame on you, Michaels. Let's get right into the start of the show for the Intercontinental Championship. Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles, and Sammy Zayn. Wow. Guys, what a match, right? I, I think the right person won. I'm just gonna throw it out there. I was ready for this to happen. Right there What's with you, brother. Yeah. Right there with you. Yeah. I, honestly, this was this was the best match on the entire show. Mm. In my opinion, was, this this was, was the best match way, on the entire show. Great um, way to start the pay per view too. Oh hell yeah, dude! Like everybody brought it. It was it was mm-hmm. a hell of a match. Yeah. It, yeah. You, there's there's not really too much that can be said. I mean, everybody was at the top of their game. Um, it, you can't ask for too much more, especially for a starter. You know, to get everybody fired up perfect i wish i wish jeff hartley would have done something spectacular <laughs> he clearly did <laughs> i thought jeff would have won the match but i'm fine with sammy winning and i thought the way he won 
was what, really what is, what is it with you and just wanting to keep belts on guys who are fucking like from the attitude era <laughs> <laughs> you don't use ray the right way oh angle shouldn't have lost that match We're, you know <laughs> Oh, Jeff should have, you know, they could have kept the bell on Jeff. Come on, dude. Some new blood, finally. Yeah, yeah, no, I was fine with it. And I thought the ending was brilliant. I mean, Sammy hooking them all up with, uh, you know, handcuffs was just, we've never seen that before, uh, you know, in a ladder match. So I thought that was really cool. I'm yeah. disappointed. You know what? If you think about it, if Jeff's ear was handcuffed to something, especially a ladder and vince has been on this kick with having people's eyeballs poke out how come jeff can lose his ear to get free from the fucking ladder that would have been amazing he didn't give him enough time to put that together you know i'm, I'm pretty sure he, he thought of that you know he didn't have enough time to figure out how to make that work that's hilarious but yeah man shout out to sammy man sammy has just been on it in fact he even popped up on the pre-show um also hey saying i just i, I just love the you, you know going back to um to when you when you look with impact wrestling when moose was having the uh, tna title at the time he's he doesn't have i guess he's looking for it now but when he did actually have the title you know he plays sort of the same role that sammy's play and he did an okay job with it but sammy has just been selling this idea almost to the point where many times, like when you listen to the commentary, like Cole or, um, you, you, you know, any of them, they, they would almost, you almost kind of want to agree that he is <laughs> the real intercontinental. Because he was. <laughs> Not like Moose just finding a fucking belt and going, I'm the champ. <laughs> or, or Taz going here brian cage now you're the ftw champ right well, right right he was the champ and <laughs> the title got vacated because he couldn't come to work because of covid he wanted to be safe right and i don't know if we knew it was covid related i i hope that maybe we figured it out after Corey reminded us over and over and over <laughs> right but you know it, i mean that's why it's so good and this it it actually makes sense yeah yeah you had three guys in that time period fighting in this ladder match over it it's basically a recreation of what they did with sean and razor you know 25 years ago but you added new elements mm -hmm. a third person and it was fucking phenomenal yeah i'll tell you what the highlight of the show for me clearly outside of this match was when retribution showed up <laughs> Oh, that's right. They weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, we'll jump over into that when we hit our, our, our Raw talk. Yeah. Uh, They're um, only on Raw. Not on the pay-per-view. <laughs> How about our... They haven't signed that contract yet. They, oh, apparently not. Yeah, they, right. they just signed the contract for the weekly shows. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. There was a 24-7 championship match. Well, not really. <laughs> are they ever no. really matches right exactly but uh our truth uh did get pinned by gulak man i yeah. thought gulak should have kept the belt and they should have had the belt go over to smackdown but whatever you got a draft yeah. coming up and you do have a draft coming up the belt. you do have a draft coming up and what are you putting any stake into that fucking title for? Oh, it's, of course. It's it really is the moose example is your twenty <laughs> belt. Mm. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So yeah, um, so yeah, Gulak had uh, won that, and then later on in the show, of course, our truth figured out a way to get his baby back, and so uh, you know, I'm glad our truth has. I'm having a lot of fun with that, and and I should say Vince McMahon because I think those are the only two that are having the best fun with the 24/7 uh, title. Uh, let's move right on though. The Raw Women's Championship with Oscar and Zelina. I don't I don't get to uh, Zelina. Okay, she was in NXT, right? That's correct. Okay, see, because I, I didn't watch a lot of NXT during that time, so I don't know 
how she was as a during that time. It, I, it was only like two years ago. Whatever, dude. leave me alone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've never really seen her uh, perform in, in the ring. But I thought she handled herself pretty well. I mean, it was an all right match. Um, well, she was I, in TNA too. I mean, she's got the chops. I mm -hmm. mean, but yeah, you know, this clearly was just a transitional thing. At least so I thought. Mm -hmm. And then after the match, you know, they kind of strung it on a little bit more. So yeah, know, it was. Yeah. It is what it was. Yeah, yeah. Because yes. after the, that's after definitely the one way to describe it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And what nothing to write fuck's, home about? For fuck's sake, they're continuing the feud. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. Right after the match, Zelina went ahead and, and started to attack her. So. <sighs> <laughs> but is, if no. if you were a part of the Vegas Bad Boys app chat, then you would know my feelings on this exact occurrence. <laughs> the, the one thing though is is that you have to give her a little something like that oh because yeah. she has no credibility on the main roster yet as a wrestler so at least have her come off as someone who's tough but as we saw obviously that match and then the beat down a little bit afterwards Oscar was fine to go out and wrestle a full other match. So, right. Yeah. I mean, and, you know what? I'm, I'm fine with it because Selena Vega is is a good talent. You know, mm -hmm. um, she needs to get in the mix with the women's division, and you know, really, so you would put her up there with Charlotte and Becky and Sasha. <laughs> Bailey. Oh no, no. Let's let's not get ahead of ourselves, okay? But okay. I, I like the things that she brings to the table. I just wouldn't. I wouldn't have hot shot it and put her in with what does she bring to the table? What are her things she brings to the table? Well, she's she's a decent wrestler. Let's put it that way. She's a decent wrestler. Overall, the package for me, I, I'm entertained. She can wrestle and she can talk. That's what she brings to the table. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you want to see her with like the uh, the I riot like, squad or I, uh, no? I, I think I think if you're looking for someone to be part of retribution, there's one person. Hmm. Why not? Or or fuck it. Here's a, here's an angle that hasn't been suggested at all. Who's to say that she's not in, involved with them already? Mm. I you know what? Honestly, after showing the tough side. Have her show up in a raw underground. Ooh, maybe you know, pave the way that way. You okay. know, but yeah. but yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of ideas what could be going oh, on. Yeah. Without a doubt, I I think that I think that you know, just you know, saying putting her up with like the four horse women, basically the WWE four horse women, is is not exactly anywhere near where I would place her. But um, no. you know, definitely middle of the pack. Um, she is l miles better than you know Lana in the bottom tier, but uh, she's she's not on the level of uh, you know so the four horsewomen. That, okay, that's a great question. I, I, I'm glad you said Lana because obviously Lana, Lana, Lana. But as compared to let's say Mickey James and Natty, she's obviously not as good of an in ring worker, right? But she can talk. So why not, instead of just having her go after Asuka, which is out of left field, why not have her run against Mickey or have her run against uh, Maddie to show that, you know, to do what you tried doing tonight to give her a little longer feud and to start investing? Because the other question is, I guess she's a heel because she went against Asuka and she attacked her afterwards mm -hmm. but how long is she going to be able to keep as a heel right well at, at the end of the day that really doesn't matter because we've got the draft coming up so the that is a that is a complete reset button that can be pressed for yeah. everybody on the roster 
Like they could literally flip the entire roster upside down if they wanted to. Which would basically mean that just Raw goes to SmackDown and SmackDown no. goes to Raw. <laughs> well, <laughs> what I fucking mean. You know, I, I, I think you have a good point there. And when you look at it, um, SmackDown is increasingly becoming a, you know, kind of the A show. So you need entertainers and you need people that can talk. So why not, you know, throw her over there, you know? So it would have been cool if you could have got her. And I know they just blew this whole angle off with her and Garza and Andrade, but her and Garza over there on SmackDown, I'm sold. So Yeah, well, <laughs> we, don't, we don't know where Garza's going to be. <laughs> right. Damn. And just to let you know, Sin City Steve, BJ Darton says, well, she is better than Brandy Rhodes. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> I mean, ouch. No shit. Oh, oh man. man. Then well, again, you know, that I, all, all due respect, but that's not saying a whole hell of a lot. <laughs> just saying. Right, 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 right. <laughs> that's right. Hey, and you too can also join in the comments. Just uh, go to our live video comments feed and uh, We'll try to throw it in there when we can. The United States Championship, Bobby Lashley versus Apollo Crews. I'm, this so, was... glad, I'm so glad we got to see that match. Yeah. Because I've been waiting to see those two go at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this was the nacho match, wasn't it? <laughs> wasn't that the stipulation? You go get nachos <laughs> in this match? Damn. The only Pretty thing much. that was hurting was my fucking eyeballs from trying to keep them open during the match. You know? <laughs> oh, hurt! Oh. You were in the hurt business watching the match. <laughs> uh, they're, they're, you know, Apollo is such a, a good, you know, he's a solid guy, a good worker. Do something for him. I, I thought maybe, maybe a glimpse of maybe this will be the turn maybe at this point um he loses to lashley ricochet comes in to help him and then they beat the shit out of ricochet and um or maybe ricochet so we're gonna him. we're gonna grow the hurt business still we'll, well keep the hurt business but get get lashley out of there and put yeah you know lashley going to smack oh, oh i see yeah gotcha. put cruise yeah. in and you know Something well, like that. Not only that, but I mean, then you start, I mean, off of what Michael said, you could then start building Ricochet back up because what the fuck is he doing? Hopefully, Ricochet goes to SmackDown. Fuck, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ, because he, <laughs> he is dead in the water right now. Yeah. Well, he's, I mean, dude, he's he's had about a good of run as uh, local. Oh, he did. Without question. Yeah, he got the documentary on him, you know, the whole nine, and it's peaks and valleys. True, you know, so. You it's time for another peak for him. You just didn't hear what I said. That's all. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's had about as good a run as what? Loki. Oh, shit. Man, that's one guy that'll never make the majors. He did. <laughs> and then he left. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. what it seems like they're doing to Ricochet. Hey, you got yeah. charisma, you got talent. We'll keep you outside of the ring in this match. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Well, he uh, Lashley is still our United States champion. Got to gotta keep the belt in the uh, in the Hurt business. Say it again? You're a United States champion. What? He's, <laughs> He's our. <laughs> Michaels has no love whatsoever. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Whatever. Let's jump over into the Raw Tag Team. He was so good with Lana. I agree. He was good with Lana. <laughs> I was being facetious, dude. Of course you would say that. He yeah. was good with Lana. Of course he was. <laughs> so uh, from, from, the, from the chat, Raven says, Ricochet back to NXT next week. Ooh. I hope so. I, I could go away. It. Honestly, fuck it. I'll take it. Dude. Have him take it, the man. title off of Balor. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Man, no Ballard. Oh, <laughs> all right. Jeez. Or, or just just think about it. We could have Ricochet versus Cameron Grimes. 
Hell yeah. Hell fucking no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm glad it's, it, it's not being looked on as, as a bad thing to go from SmackDown or Raw back down to NXT. Yeah. It shouldn't I'm even glad. be, the, the connotation shouldn't even be back down to NXT. Should be you're just yeah. going to another brand, and hopefully, right. exactly. Yeah. Hopefully, but I don't know if that comes across for everyone. It does. You know? Yeah, it yeah. Does. yeah. Um, I think they also have an opportunity here, and we'll get on it later. But talking about the draft to bring in some talent that would make NXT more competitive with Sin City Steve's favorite show. So you know, this is a good time. Yeah. So basically what you want to do is take people who are not getting you ratings on the main show <laughs> on NXT because they're going to bring ratings to NXT. Okay. Gotcha. No, there are people that can bring ratings. Ricochet being one of them. What, Roman Reigns on NXT? Is that what we're doing now? <laughs> no. <laughs> just no, take he's the reason ratings. why SmackDown is surviving right now. All right, hey, uh, John Hobson from the chat says Cameron Grimes should be the popcorn stand. <laughs> He's going to be at the popcorn stand uh, from he and I. Oh, man. Oh, and well, uh, BJ Darden says Adam Cole to Raw, baby. We'll get to it. We'll yep. get to it. Um, um, BJ's, BJ's got a mind for the business. So, I, yeah. Him, him me, Steve, we all think alike. Lucky you and John keep John, together. John Jed. Hey man, listen, <laughs> I got this I got the smarts on lock, baby. My whole kingdom. You know, we're coming for y'all. Where do I sit uh, on the logical side in the smarts? <laughs> Am I like in the middle or well, I'm more now that you had, now that you had to ask that question? <laughs> I'll tell you My what, opinion you has changed. changed. He said you're a total WWE Mark, Look, pre show, the, the post shows, everything. Look, whatever. A, 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 actually, so yeah, Lucky brings up a great point. Raven says in the chat, mm -hmm. uh, Vince really loves DJ. He has zero knowledge of talents past <laughs> careers. <laughs> and he says, Vince McMahon loves DJ. He goes to every mania and even watches all the pre shows. I, <laughs> I mean, it's all it. There you go. Facts. <laughs> Whatever. So he's Put me. he's more so in my kingdom then. Oh boy. Smart kingdom. Oh, of course. All yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Well, there you do go. realize impact? If if Vince did see you in person, he'd think you were Keith Lee. <laughs> <laughs> he would. <laughs> you probably got a point to that. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. Raw Tag Team Championship, the Street Profits versus Andrade and Angel Garza. What's your guys' take on, on that? What about how I thought it would, but, I, I mean, the match was compromised. I thought they could have probably played off of Garza and Andrade, you know, and finally got this thing underway, but... <sighs> Yeah, we don't know. We'll see what happens with uh, old Garza there. I mean, dude's a stud, you know, incredible talent. So hopefully it's nothing serious. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one thing. I <laughs> If you think about it, the Street Profits have a very good um, chemistry. I mean, yeah. you talk about it either in the ring or on the mic. They're, they're really good. Um the Garza Andrade, you know, once again, Andrade is a good example of someone who, as soon as they came up from NXT, um, as much as they've tried to do stuff with them, they just can't connect. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's, you know, it's a, it's a problem when you bring someone up who, again, it's pattern. You see it in, in different guys where they just they don't just transfer it right into it and you know i i don't know i every time i watch him he's another one that i mean if he wasn't with charlotte realistically would he still be in the position he's been 
Hmm. Well, I mean, I think one thing happened too. He got injured when he was kind of heading up to, you know, where they thought he could go. And then that kind of just derailed him. And then he got suspended, right? Didn't he get suspended for, uh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, he's kind of had some bumps in the road there and hasn't been able to necessarily recover. However, we could say that, but he's on TV every week. So yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. If he wasn't with Charlotte, would he yeah. be on every week? Yeah. You know, and one of the biggest problems we know, I mean, I, I, let's be honest, the biggest thing in glaring is the fact that he doesn't speak English fluently. Oh, yeah. Without question. That you know, holds him at, back tremendously. Yeah. And look at like Cesaro. <laughs> You know, you always you look at him and you go, well, why is that guy who's like Vince's like, you know, fucking wet dream type of body type? Why is that guy not at the top tier level? It's because, you know, I think Vince hears, you know, that accent and goes, that won't sell. Yeah. And he kind of kept he kind of kept the chrome dome for too long. So he probably always viewed him as an old man. <laughs> Well, what the fuck? You gotta know when to <laughs> cut that hair, baby. Sure. All right. Well, let's uh, fuck? let's just jump over. Presentation to... is everything. <laughs> Obviously. The SmackDown's Women's Championship, Bailey. Now it's supposed to be uh, Bailey and Nikki. Ah, no Nikki, eh? So oh. that that yeah. call that caused uh, Bailey. She was just gonna go ahead and say, "Hey, raise my hand, so I can uh, stay champ." And again, who comes out? Oscar. And uh, I don't know. What's your guys' take we've, on that? We've seen Oscar wrestle so many times over she's the a, last two or three months in, in pay per view matches. I'm she's done. She's a good worker. She's a good worker. No, she's a great worker. But I'm done. Like, put somebody else in that spot. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know. Who? Yeah, who else would? Who else should have come out to? Okay, have... put Lacey in there. Shit. Yeah, but Lacey has nothing to do within that store. Plus, Lacey's a fucking heel, jackass. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> and I don't. I normally <laughs> don't like heel versus heel things, but I mean, I just don't want to see Oscar again. Uh, you know. Uh. Okay, mark that. Some just someone time fucking mark that one because he just said I didn't want to see Oscar again give him four weeks and he's going to be like man they're not using Oscar enough <laughs> someone please make a gif of that or like <laughs> a clip or something right. thank you I'll make that clip for this week <laughs> Jesus so how exciting was it to see uh, Sasha? Hey. Not exciting. I, I listen. They Sasha shouldn't have been there. Okay? okay. Quite honestly, she should have still been off the TV. You didn't like the Aaliyah look? Listen, I like the look, baby. Okay. Sasha is is mm, mm -hmm. you know, but she shouldn't have been there. Especially grabbing at the neck brace and all that Whoa. stuff. <laughs> they had they had to they had to make sure that you remembered exactly what happened. No, you keep know, her off a TV. Like what happened the... last week, or you <laughs> yeah. know, especially Dude, thought, because the draft is coming. I thought for sure after Bailey beat the shit out of her, she was gone for another couple of weeks until the draft. Yeah, but so, no. But, but I think I mean we're we're gonna see if she shows up on SmackDown then what's the point but if this was the um the the one touch before they separate them on brands yep. then that's fine yep that, yeah. that that's exactly how i viewed it i yeah. mean everything was fine as far as the match it, it was it was a serviceable match i mean it was it was what it was um realistically they made the best out of a shit situation yeah yeah. And you know they they improved it the best that they could. Um, chances are they knew you know they may not have had a, a very um, loaded locker room. That's one other thing to consider. Lucky. Yeah. Um, they may have only had the people that were actually working matches. So who else is who else are you going to bring in to work the match? 
someone that has proven herself to be, you know, an Iron Woman, and that I would was be already awesome. tested for the show. And yeah, yeah. So yeah. I mean, I had zero issues with it, and you know, that's something that everybody has to keep in mind. Is you know, card subject yeah. to change has never been more <laughs> more true than it has right been now, for like six or seven yeah. months. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I'll give him a break on that. <laughs> All right. Well, Holy shit. I just I just made an alibi and an excuse for WWE against Lucky's claim. What, is he? what, what he? the fuck? What a Sorry, WWE guys, I'm sympathizer done. you are. I'm done. Coming no. back. He's coming back. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, yes, Bailey is still the SmackDown's women's champion, so we have that. Let's jump over, though, to our WWE Championship match, Drew McIntyre versus Randy Orton in an ambulance match. <sighs> oh, I Sin, thought. Sin City, for real? You want no, to get changed by the, the, uh, You know, it. once they finally got to the match, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you that were not in the Vegas Bad Boys app chat while yeah. the pay-per-view was going on, I legitimately asked the question because I wasn't sure. If it was the edibles or if Randy Orton's entrance was the longest entrance <laughs> in the history of the WWE. Yeah. It was like you a what? Remix. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, what, what's interesting though is that um, if you want to talk like the ultimate just tie everything together because the truth is, is where were you going with this? Yeah. And in the end, I mean, you know, again, it's it's Drew versus Randy. Now, in terms of ambulance matches, probably their best one behind Shane. What, and without question. Um, but the 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 good aspect was bring all those guys that he wronged and get them involved. Yeah. yeah. And now, I, I, yeah, go ahead. Where, where was Keith Lee though? Mm. that was one thing that i was like hmm so yeah. i mean maybe we'll see now maybe maybe that's drew's next maybe that's the next feud i don't know yeah and then you know well either that or tomorrow you get some uh edge you know that's the other person i was missing <laughs> <laughs> i think for fuck's sake i think they're done with edge Oh, Edge can't do anything. He he's yeah. physically unable to. <laughs> How long has he been out now? What he hurt himself? What about three months ago? Two months three ago? Months? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's too short. Was it WrestleMania? Yeah, it's too short. If he's gonna come back, yeah, you, you, you have him come back at fucking Rumble. Why waste it on? Yeah, something? exactly. Yeah, so maybe it is Keith Lee. It's gotta be. Which I'm a hundred percent cool with. Um, I think that I think that this was probably one of the best ambulance matches that I've seen. Yeah. Um, I, quite honestly, there's always some fuckery and chicanery at the end of the matches, and I I shit you not, as the events transpired, I was just waiting for someone to just you know fuck Drew McIntyre like you know, mm. but I was just waiting for it and waiting for it and waiting for it, and then when it didn't happen i i was elated like i was like holy shit this was a great ending to this story and yeah. it's been a long time since they've done something like that honestly yeah. i was and i i thought right at the um right at the point that randy was going to close the door and then drew put his arm into the door to stop it i thought that was going to be the moment that flair was going to come out and basically make the the save for drew and that would have been flair's role but i in the end i thought having flair drive an ambulance at 71 years old <laughs> <laughs> the door ripped off and saying that he's going to be speeding <laughs> yeah <laughs> and we know that rick probably just had a couple yeah. uh, i thought well, that's great, man. I just want to. I if they were smart, there would be like a headline right now that Ric Flair has been pulled over for drunk driving. <laughs> that would be awesome. Own <laughs> ambulance <laughs> and and captive uh, hostage of Randy Orton. 
that would have been brilliant. <laughs> and then Rick could have had one more match uh, in his career against Orton, and that would have been it for his life. <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus. A career Dude. versus life match. Orton versus... Oh, Orton. man. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Well, you guys are you guys are uh, were right saying that it was a, a good match. You know, I I, I was disappointed at during the, uh, the the mess up of the catering. You know, I, don't mess up food in the back, guys. <laughs> yeah, don't mess they, up the food. You they know, got really nice catering back there. Too. They did. Yeah, I've been back there once, and dude, the catering <laughs> setup is legendary. <laughs> You didn't eat the catering food while you were back there, right? I did. That's for the, I looked at. That's it. for the wrestlers. It okay. was only for the wrestlers and their family. <laughs> All right. So Drew McIntyre still our WWE champion, despite what Matt Michaels think of him. It's a good day for <laughs> us. Okay. Real you quick. Are, real yeah. quick. Yes. From the chat, BJ yes. Darden says he should show up on Raw asleep at the wheel at the start of the show. But 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 they should. It should only be about like five feet past the uh, like getting yeah. weird, right? And he kind of fell asleep right there. And he's been asleep, yeah, the whole twenty four entire hours. time. That, yeah, that be amazing, amazing. Uncle Brucey. <laughs> uh, Raven Raven from the chat says sense. BTE should have a horseman Arn Anderson. Drive an ambulance, third generation Cody in the back of the ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> Watch it; it'll be on BTE tomorrow. It, it never, it never ceases to amaze me just how much Tony Khan lives rent free in his head. <laughs> <laughs> it is absolutely amazing. That's but wait, awesome. wait. To be honest, though, he just made a very valid point. Oh, You're yeah. telling me that AEW on Wednesday is not, not going to have the fucking the uh, the brothers of uh, whatever fucking those your guys are uh, uh, the, the the mom's minivan guys. Oh, yeah. oh they already the best have friends. The minivan. Yeah, so just you know have uh, their opponent in the back. Uh, you know it's yeah. <laughs> they'll they'll work they'll work an ambulance into the show in some way shape or form. I guarantee I, I I don't guarantee it, but I'm damn sure that it would happen. And once again, it, it proves what the fuck is going on with pro wrestling this year, where every fucking like show has a goddamn vehicle involved now. Every show, <laughs> dude. Every everybody's been asking and begging for the return of the Attitude Era. That's the same shit that they did during the Attitude Era. Yeah. That's yeah, but you know, yeah. I mean, I mean, what we're like a fucking we're one, like we're one fucking pay per view away from like Marquez getting an Uber to like show up. <laughs> so I, I I I do have to point this out, and I know I'm going to be chastised as being a homer and a, you know whatever, but I do find it very interesting that they did have a baby face take a bump through a windshield. Um, you know, right after a uh, right after a, another rival company show did almost the exact same thing. Yeah, Just yeah, but at least they're smart enough not to have them throw someone into a vat of orange juice. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. That's coming soon. Vince loves that. Oh yeah. God damn Jericho, that was good <laughs> shit. Wait a minute, shit. Well, <laughs> we got a vat of shit. Dolph yep. Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler could go into it because that ties everything to get continuity, brother. <laughs> Dolph was part of the, that squad that got the shit on him, and he'll fall in the back <laughs> with the shit, and he'll be wearing a light up jacket. Yes. <laughs> so wait, Michael's. Bruce, what, when what, Bruce, what, wait, when Bruce, when you put this on TV, just all all I need is just a little bit of a shout out, just a little. Bit. Right. So what you're saying is throwing someone into a vat of shit is such good shit. Exactly. Well, that's, that's how I came up with it, pal. Perfect. <laughs> Raven says WWE has wine. We'll have a wine match. 
there with you the go. Undertaker's new wine. <laughs> that should have been his final match. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> well, the well, fucking wine in the cat. <laughs> dude, they, they, they put Paul Bearer in concrete. So, yeah. would, a wine match. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I see what you did there. Why not? Oh, why man. Not? Why not? <laughs> Well, let's get to the most important match of tonight's show, the Universal Championship match with Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. I I enjoyed it. Yeah. I, I the way that, man, I mean, oh, Roman's a beast. Yeah. Uh, my wife called him a Samoan god. I don't know what that means. <laughs> You're gonna but, be wearing, you know what you're gonna be wearing? Tell you're gonna be wearing the Roman Reigns cosplay this year. Yeah. <laughs> With the hair. I, I can't wait to see you have the, the fake tribal tattoo. <laughs> you and Simon Street, because he's gotta wear the Cody Rhodes tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> well, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was definitely in that match, telling me just oh, look, look how, shirt, look I mean, how, look how cut up he is, and just how. And I'm just, off, baby. Like, I'm like, oh, okay, Damn. but um. <laughs> well, there's that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, w whatever gets things going. Um, let's go. Um, so yeah, the way I yeah, just the way how it how it was ending was just great. I I enjoyed it. You know. Tell me I'm the tribal chief. Well, I mean, you, there's a lot to be said about the ending, but the way they built this, you know, and it's still more to go. Sure. But the way that they built it. Here we go. The package <laughs> was so great. I the video believe. package was great. It was awesome, you know, and Roman's done a great job selling this thing. So, you know, kudos to them for really digging in and, you know, Getting this thing over. Well, seven I will say th late. Say that again? Seven, seven years late. Oh, oh yeah. Instead Without question. Seven years ago. Yeah. Without question. Um, you know, it's interesting because you know, BJ says in the comment that you know, him and Rocket Mania and who's the head of the oh. dynasty match. Yeah, when when he was saying that constantly trying to get Jay. The only thing I kept saying in my mind was, yeah, The Rock is at some point. I, and, and then I think I, as I was reading for topics, I thought I was reading that it looked like Rock was gearing up for possibly doing some, you know, getting back into the and ring. I so said I, it. So everybody laughed me off the fucking block. <laughs> yeah. I said it. No laughed you off the block. I said it. You delusionally come up with this shit. <laughs> as I said it. Like, I'm fucking, I'm booked in bullshit. Hey. Fucking, you know, it isn't that we fucking, you know, might go, oh, you're delusional or stuff. It's just like, what the fuck? Who cares? I what, do. What I want it, it to happen, baby. Why? What does it bring to the product? Whether it's in LA or whether it's in Tampa, because, you know, there's a rumor it may be in Tampa. Either way, it sells a great story. And Roman has went Hollywood or either in Tampa, their origins are from Florida. I love it, man. It's a it's the time to do it. For one fucking match. No, it'll be more than one match. Oh, see, now you're oh it'll be one more match. No, <laughs> no. You're gonna tell me that Wayne Dwayne Johnson, the fucking actor who is pulling down some of the biggest money that any motherfucking actress have ever pulled <laughs> is going to have the time to step into a goddamn ring more than once. Yep. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> It'll be once. It'll be once at Mania. Hey, you know what? And I like BJ, man. BJ said, Lucky said that shit like three weeks ago, legit. Thanks, BJ. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, Look, it sounds like sounds like Lucky's got himself a fan. Right. <laughs> Congrats, buddy. There's one. That's, that's for him right there when he sees this. There's it's one. Fun, well, man. look, bottom you, line. Hey, you gotta fucking stop taking any kind of chair shots, man. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. 
if you if you're starting to believe that this guy makes sense, man, you gotta fucking <laughs> really look at your life there. Uh oh, hey, so, wait a minute. All, all yeah, I know inside, though, inside a run in, Raven says it's been known for months that rocks do a mania, baby. Yeah, boom. Yeah, dude, and actually it's been known for months. Considering about to reiterate it here, you didn't predict anything, Lucky. Hey, considering hey, how you like to, you know, alter things and facts and you know make everything suit your narrative, I actually fucking agreed with you when you threw that out there that it was going to happen. So, Thanks, Steve. <laughs> no, but I, I'm just saying, Welcome to like, the kingdom. for no, I hashtag not my fucking king. <laughs> All that I'm, I'm saying, all that I'm saying my- is at least at least a broken clock is right twice a day. Baby, all right? That's right, baby. That's and right. the sun shines on a dog's ass once in a while. <laughs> this just happens to be one of those occasions. That's right. right. Hey. And if it's been known for months, then you couldn't have predicted it. I didn't know for months. Up. I don't oh, have inside. I didn't track. know for months. Whatever. You fucking read the dirt sheets. Raja probably told you. <laughs> yes. And you probably don't even remember because you're so fucking delusional. <laughs> hey, my kingdom stand up. We don't need this. <laughs> Hashtag my king. I'm going to make the shirt, baby. <laughs> what the actual fuck? That's crazy. <laughs> But you're anyway, one, you're one mass short of being the dark order. Listen, my elevator <laughs> sometimes order. doesn't go all the way to the top floor, but it always stops at the penthouse, baby. <laughs> oh, Lord. You know, um, again, it, it, I, I thought the way the match came out, I thought it was, it was really good. And, yeah. And then, um, you know, having uh, Jimmy come out, you know. Th- I guess I didn't call that either. You know, throw the towel, throw the towel. <laughs> Hey, Jay said, don't throw the towel. He threw the towel anyway, where that's going to go. It's a lot there. But um, yeah. but I, I, I love, I mean, Roman is just at his best. The only thing that's, the only thing I hate about having this sort of segment right now is it not taking place in front of like a live audience, right? Because oh, yeah. it would have really been great. And I, I listen, and, and, and I get it. Room. I get it. I'm just saying that. It would have just been, it would have been awesome to have that sort of experience right there. Oh, well, they're in Florida. They could have had a live audience. <laughs> well, that's, that is true. Every, 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 everything's now open. <laughs> Everybody come in. Let's go. But you know uh, what? If, yeah. uh, LA still having a problem with uh, getting stuff open, baby. Florida will have it open. <laughs> we'll have Mania next year. It will happen. So overall, guys, you guys are uh, go to Mania. Don't wear a mask and just enjoy just breathe it in (laughs) i'll be there (laughs) overall guys uh when it comes to the show uh your overall take decent show didn't care for it liked it very much what's your Uh, final what they had to work with yeah i mean it was good yeah yeah i don't i don't have any complaints okay yeah i'm I'm middle of the road on it yeah gotcha nothing was like blow away amazing other than the uh the IC title match um that like i said was the best match on the show um but i mean there was nothing that was just outwardly bad i i thought on the show um one thing that you know call it what you will but uh if they were smart then they uh they may be able to work this whole uh, referee uh officiating bumbling into some sort of an angle so you know obviously about the clusterfuck finish with mickey james and oscar on raw mm-hmm. um, how that was you know signaled to to stop prematurely yeah. um you know there was a there was a pretty fuck finish tonight granted you know garza injured himself they threw up the x whatnot um but again there was some sort of a miscue or like the guys in the ring didn't know that the match was going to be over um so i mean you could in theory, use this storyline. Plus, um, unless my ears were deceiving me, I heard some commentary, you know, shit talking the refs as being slow and out of position and, and, you know, all that kind of stuff throughout the Mm -hmm. show. So could we possibly see some sort of a, um, you know, bringing some sort of an angle about where they're second guessing the referees or, you know, something of that nature. I think that that could actually, be worked into a pretty interesting angle. 
you mean like um, I don't know retribution paying off the refs? Yeah. Or I don't know. Danny Davis is behind retribution. Some sort of conspiracy. I mean, dude, that'd be that'd be pretty fucking dope in my opinion. Because now you're not just, you know, looking scary with fucking, you know, weapons and, you know, destroying the set and, you know, cutting shitty promos. Now you're actually being more cerebral with things. So let's now jump right into uh, WWE and SmackDown talk from this past week that was unrelated to of uh, the uh, Clash of Champions, and that will be uh, Retribution. Of course, they did kick off the show, and we got a chance to see what some of these faces were. Uh, yeah, it looked like uh, King Lucky's not ha- happy with what he's found out about Retribution so far. Um, the only thing that could make Lucky love Retribution anymore is if Cameron Grimes was in it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, is this a good look for me, A.M.? Listen, MVP destroyed Retribution with one word. The ladies were talking first, right? Then he said, you hoes. Right there, you just discredited the whole fucking group. So what are you talking about? Dude, it's so fucking weak. And, you know, it was, listen, that's not corporate MVP. That was MVP from the streets, okay? When he called the most. <laughs> I don't know. I'm over this shit. Especially he didn't put him on the pay-per-view. You could have put him on the pay-per-view tonight. Doing what? They're not he- champions. It's the fucking clash of the champions, So, dude. So you have Shayna and fucking uh, Nia Jax defend the championship against those two. If you want to kick them off with a bang... Who the fuck are the they? Angle? Who are they, Lucky? Dude, They're not fucking, fucking the established characters. Come on. Hey. Mm. You're fucking, you're, you want the fucking, you want to come before you get a hand job. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so can, can, can we take a second, though, and just sit back, analyze, and marvel? at the wonderful name choices that they made for this. Oh, statement. man. Yeah. Fuck out of here. T-Bar, Slap Jack. And Mace. And fucking Mace. No dollar sign in the Bad base. boy. No dollar sign. Now, yeah. the one thing that I'll mention is, uh, according to uh, Brian Alvarez, I know, blah, 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 but um, according to Alvarez, he, he went on Wrestling Observer Live and evidently Mia Yim has registered a, an Instagram account with the name of Reckoning. Mm. So now we've got T-Bar, Slapjack, Mace, Reckoning, and another name that WWE has trademarked, which I swear to God, I hope that this is not Mercedes Martinez's name, is Retaliation. What the fuck? Yeah. And we won't know until we find out what the actual fuck is going on. Hey, so BJ said, uh, BJ Darden said from the chat, look up T bar on the Urban Dictionary. <laughs> Somebody with poopy pants. <laughs> Some of this shit's got to be a rib. I swear yeah. to God. Well, well about us, the talk was. Is that backstage after the names were announced that they were the fucking laughing stock of backstage? I mean, oh. okay, so where did you get this? I where, got it on where, a dirt sheet. Yes, I did. Who? What dirt sheet? I don't know. It just came You know Raja. which one. Michael. It wasn't on Raja, okay? That's it bullshit. wasn't on Raja. <laughs> but that's what I would have. If I would have known you wanted the source, I would have brought it to you, okay? But the thing is, is that you read all these fucking dirt sheets and then you take it as word. No, he, he got it from the just fucking... said that. Oh well, you know. Word what? on the street. I didn't say Word it was on... the gospel. <laughs> he gets oh. he gets it from the fucking pro wrestling spotlight Facebook page or the four three four or some of these other fucking you know <laughs> news sites. They're on is Facebook. It that far off. I mean, if we think the shit is fucking horrible and funny, is it that far off that people that work for the company that are fucking smart? 
<laughs> or is it that far off that these people who write these dirt sheets are just fucking putting that shit out there to make people like you go, <laughs> yeah, well, th- those people believe it, so I fucking believe it. <laughs> Maybe it was clickbait, okay? But the Raven, shit stinks. Raven chimes in and says, Lucky got it from catering. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <Baby>. <laughs> I well just so you know retribution got contract deals so yeah they, go. they got contracted to tear the place up get the fuck out um so <laughs> dj yes sir um bj from the chat says uh that you should uh look up the definition of t-bar in the urban dictionary and also slap jack <laughs> and you should read those things on the air <laughs> T bar and slapjack. I'm working on slapjack. All right. <laughs> I'm sure you are. Oh, <laughs> so can can I just say how fucking hilarious this shit is? That <laughs> that uh, retribution went from showing up and demolishing the set and causing mischief for free. And instead, WWE signed them to contracts and are paying them to now show up at their events and cause mischief. They didn't pay them to show up at the pay-per-view. So, so that makes you go, who's behind it? Who's paying them? Yeah. There you go. You know, this is the thing. Everyone's jumping to fucking conclusions. And even if they don't have a direct line of where they're going, you take these little things and eventually something's going to come. If it doesn't, mm-hmm. they're going to fucking bitch it. I mean, God, how many times have we seen shit start and it just ends because there's nothing to do. There's no gas there. You have every single week, they have to put out so much fucking product. Mm-hmm. And by the way, Oh, they destroyed the uh, the arena. Well, yeah, and guess what? Now they're in the Thunderdome. You never think of that, Lucky. Oh, that's because I didn't think of it. <laughs> <laughs> we all we all know that it's Shane McMahon that's behind it anyway. <laughs> if, no, I'm, I'm I'm dead serious. They announced yeah. that a new faction was coming to WWE. The, the night that they showed up, and it just so happened to be the same night that Raw Underground yeah. was also a part of the show for the first time. Yeah, but what if it's maybe, I don't know, Stephanie? You know? There there are options. We don't know. We don't know where they're going. They might not know where they're going. But you still have things that are coming together where you can take these ends and start saying, okay, this happened, this happened, we can come with this. Yeah. Raw Underground, you know, I mean, it's hard to say where they're going with that. Downhill. <laughs> BJ says Linda. <laughs> yeah. Well, because, you know, the, with all the uh, the retribution being the, uh, the take on the Antifa. riots that were going on in the streets, yeah. it would make sense that mm-hmm. Linda's behind it all. <laughs> or now here if these guys are fucking ge- and you guys gotta admit they're fucking geniuses if they are anticipating that trump will be out of office and in february of 2021 donald trump shows up as the leader of retribution <laughs> hall of famer <laughs> donald trump <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to go another way. I thought that they would attack him. (laughs) There you go. All right. Well, you just closed it all up for us. So February, get back (laughs) when this shit takes off. It was was February of 2002 that the uh, No Way Out pay-per-view had Vince McMahon bring in NWO. Why couldn't we see? I mean, listen. Anything is fucking possible in the world of wrestling, and you, you've said some really stupid shit. This is <laughs> dumber than fucking hell. But if, the, if apparently you just did the stupid shit, 
just for the record, because I guess I was challenged to do that, the definition of T-bar from the Urban Dictionary says, when one is wearing a thong or G-string, they sit down, it sticks out, and you see a T-bar. So Sonny Kiss is wrestling here. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just sad. I'm just read. reading. Okay. Wait, you got to read the other one. You said you were doing that, did you not? Slapjack. You, you just, that's what you said. Uh, the slapjack, the act of ejaculating on one's hand and then slap another person in the face. No, boy. <laughs> we'll never get right. sponsors this way, baby. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait. So, you. <laughs> You're talking about the Pat Patterson. <laughs> oh, shit. That's why they gave him the name. <laughs> In honor of Pat. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Okay. His continuity. Yes. <laughs> All right, so why did I put uh, in my notes, I put great segment with KO, Shane, Dabakato, Braun, and Aleister Black. Was that a good segment? No. No? No, it wasn't. Oh, okay. No. I must have thought but it was. But what was a good segment? <laughs> okay. What, even And even though I'm tired of seeing the Mysterios on my TV okay. every week, I thought that the Leah thing is intriguing. Okay. So I'm I'm curious to see where they go with that. But you didn't like the the Maury storyline? Do you watch Maury? Yeah. I'm I forced mean, to I've watch. watched I've watched okay. it before. I know okay. you're deep into it. Yeah. yeah. I'm forced to watch it. Yeah. So I understand. Yeah. Okay. But you didn't like it. No, I mean it was whatever. It took forever to get it off the ground, but you know. All right. Well, you know what? Here's here's Steve. The thing. Get up, Steve. Yeah, oh. man. Live show, man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I was so enthralled with the Mysterio angle. Yeah. Yeah, dude. <laughs> but but remember the whole the whole time everyone yeah. was talking about Dominic turning on Dad. Yeah. Aaliyah turning on Dad is a better storyline. Oh yeah, yeah. No question. He, yeah. Dominic still gets to be the baby face, you know. Ali if they actually the follow through shit. with it, though, no, oh, I think sure. they—it's clear that they are. Yeah. So why why didn't they hire someone to play Mysterio's wife? Yeah, because she just is. Hmm. She's like a mime at this point. Well, she don't she don't speak English, right? That's the story. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> I don't think she speaks. <laughs> Does she it? Speaks... That's the problem. Okay, so. Yeah, it's just yeah they should have. I agree, but yeah, or least, just left her off a of TV in general. Just left her off a of TV. Could have been yeah. right there with the two kids. Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't work. All right, last take uh, that I that I have on Raw. Okay, is Lana getting that weekly ass whooping? <laughs> Getting that weekly ass woman in it, a whooping and then it's back to the doghouse, man. I mean, clearly, if there was, people always say that I'm wrong, that there's a WWE doghouse. She's clearly in it. Hang on. <laughs> Again, you in the fucking, the alternative facts bullshit. <laughs> Is there no, not one a WWE ever, no one ever said anything against the fact that there's a WWE hey, doghouse. Ask George. Ask what? George. How about that? Well, there's George isn't person. part of this show, nor is he in the chat room. So go fuck yourself, dude. <laughs> what is this shit? Now we're just gonna go ask people who don't even participate in what we do. That's fine. All right, well, let's do that. In fact, all right, next show then. All right, no, Ra Raven. If I just had to have, prove a point. Raven, please reach out to George right now and uh, get George to call into the show. <laughs> fuck. Do you have any takes, uh, King Lucky, on SmackDown that didn't pertain to anything in the Clash of Champions you want to throw out there? Um, I really love what they're doing with Alexa Bliss. I think it's mm -hmm. outstanding work. Um, you know, and she's she's doing phenomenal with it. So that's really is, is Lacey Evans in the doghouse because she got <laughs> beat up by Alexa Bliss? 
Well, I mean, there is rumors that she was for like the last six months. So, well, there you have Allegedly, it. Allegedly, rumor has it. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I have Smartville, baby, because we can live out there with like all these rumors, innuendos. You know what I'm saying? There's certain people that love that. Thank you. All right. Well, look, we'll then jump right over into Impact Wrestling that Ooh. came on. I don't, uh, I don't have a whole lot. I, uh, I'm just going to tell you a couple of things. Then I got a segment to show you that I thought was hilarious. Um, start off, though, the triple threat X Divisional title shot. And after this, the winner goes right into the match with the X Divisional champ. Rohit Raju. So it was Chris Bay, Trey Miguel, and TJP. The winner of that was Trey Miguel. After the match uh, ended, Rohit immediately jumped in the ring, ring and within 10 seconds, he pinned Trey. Because, of course, the match was pretty brutal, right? So Trey just really, you know, that was the whole point of uh, Rohit uh, retaining this title, which he's doing everything he can to not really have to fight to keep this title, and he's doing a good job with that. So he is still your X Divisional title. Uh, good stuff there. Um, with Susie, she is still doing her best, trying not to jump into her uh, Sue Young uh, uh, persona. And going uh, a little long at this point. Say it again. Going a little long at this point. Yeah, yeah. Kylie Ray is, you know, also kind of helping her to to not allow little Susie Young to come back. So they're still playing along with that. Uh, one thing that was pretty funny though, uh, EC3 is saying, hey, why don't we help Moose figure out the connections of where this title is, you know, where, how to find, because this whole thing, Moose has been trying to figure out where EC3 is, because where he is is where this title is. He's been leaving clues and apparently, uh, you know, uh, Moose is having a hard time uh, figuring it out. So EC3 gave us Moose's telephone number, uh, his cell number, which I'll give it to you as well. It's 407-457-8494. There you go. Thank you. Uh, Matt Mike was going to call. But what really, is, you're only supposed to. You got to give it to him one more time. It's 407-457-8494. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. 8494. Okay. You got on speaker? Let's see. All right, here we go. <laughs> the voicemail box is not, not set up. <laughs> I know it would have been dope if I would have said control your narrative. Yeah, so the whole purpose of that. Was we if we had a clue to call that number so we could let Moose uh, know? So I guess Moose hurry up and uh, <laughs> <laughs> did something with that number. Great segment again. It was uh, it was funny. Uh, of course, Bravo is still working on his wedding uh, as they're working on. So uh, they're running that. And Eric Young, man, they're really uh, giving him a, a pretty good uh, storyline. I see King Lucky shaking his head. Uh, he beat up both Deaners in the ring. Uh -huh. oh, you must have been crushed. Said he hit? You must have been crushed. Oh. <laughs> Your favorite tag team. I, I know. He was then like about to he was like then the about Deaners. to I like the Deaners more than I like uh Cameron Grimes. <laughs> you never watch Impact. I do watch Impact every week. I just let Impact cover Impact. <laughs> That's it. And then Scott Diamore jumped into the ring, which Eric Young is about to beat him up as well. And who came for the save? Eddie Edwards came back because he had been uh, out ever since. He got beat up by Eric Young. So Eric Young is just on a, a, a tirade right now, just showing his dominance as the uh, t uh, the Impact uh, champion. And so with that, but one segment they did play is it's, it's it's a little bit about four minutes. But enjoy this. I think you're going to really get a good kick out of it because I did. And I'm loving everything that they're doing on Impact when it comes to this particular storyline. So I'm going to jump right over to it for you guys' entertainment as well, so you get to enjoy it too. All right, let's enjoy, uh, this, enjoy this now while it is up on. Uh... 
you too. My name is Heath. I used to have a last name, but now a billionaire keeps it in a safe. And if you know me, it ain't no secret. I need a job. And it's not only because I have kids. Daddy, Daddy, can we get a water slide for a pool? Yeah! I don't know, baby. Can we? <laughs> I also need a job because this professional wrestling is what I love to do. <laughs> and look, I can go anywhere I want to, but... Excuse me, sir. You know you're not welcome. Like I was saying, I can go anywhere I want, but where I want to be is an impact wrestling. Why? Because one, they have some of the best competition in the world. And two, well, my best friend's here. Oh look, it's Rhino in the wild. Why are you standing like that? It's a jungle out there in the impact wrestling ring and Rhino is becoming an endangered animal. And you can do your part to support Rhino Conservation by supporting hashtag Heath for Impact. With Heath by my side, I know I'll always be safe. You know, it's cheaper than a cup of coffee. Well, actually, it's, it's free. You can help me out and get impact management eyes on hashtag Heath for Impact. Please get this trending on Twitter or any other social media platform out there. And you know, fans, it's not just you and me that want Heath here in Impact. Many notable names from wrestling to entertainment support this cause. Don't just take it from me. You know, Heath is a wrestler and all he's doing is trying to get a job with Impact Wrestling. I mean, come on, Impact Wrestling. Just hire Heath. Come on. I mean, Kit, I need you, buddy. They won't hire Heath. I know, I know, it's ridiculous. Listen to your boy, Flavor Flav. All right, Impact Wrestling. Y'all got me? Y'all know what time it is. Time for y'all to give Heath a job, man, and stop joking. All right, Scott D. Amore. You got me? This is Nancy Carrigan, two-time Olympic figure skating Olympic medalist. And, um, you know, an axle jump is quite difficult, but this one is easy. Give Heath a job. Hashtag Heath for impact. Hi, Scott Damore. Do you want to hear Chuck Norris fact? <laughs> well, I can make onions cry. And here's another. I can make you cry if you don't do the right thing and give Heath a job. Take it from me. Heath is a great wrestler and a black belt of a father. The man needs money. He's got to put food on the table. You know why? Because the man got kids. Yes, that's right. I didn't even want to say this, but my goodness, my truck got repoed last night. What? Yes. You mean to tell me, Scott, you're going to let this man get his car repoed? This ain't life. Bret Hart getting his jacket stolen by the repo man. This is Heath getting his actual truck stolen by a real repo man. <laughs> you know, hashtag Heath Brett back. 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 You're looking at the real deal now. Woo! Woo! As you can see, there's widespread support for this cause. Fans, thank you for your part. But we need your continued support because this fight is not over until Heath has a contract. An impact management. If you haven't been moved by this message, how in the world can you say no to these two beautiful faces? Scott, you be stupid when my dad is not on Impact. He wanted the greatest wrestler of all time. Way more people want Impact than my dad on. Scott, my dad was wrestling 14 years. He does not know how to do anything else. Please let him have a chance. Yes, Scott. Come on now. No, oh, we just got my face fucking hurts from laughing so much. We're totally flagged now. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Copyright claim. There Copyright. we go. We're so fucked. 
I'm going to have to make some calls tomorrow. Thanks, man. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, hold on. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, go ahead and make those calls. And roughly, they spent about roughly six to seven hundred dollars on, uh, or maybe even eight hundred on those cameos. Yeah, that looked up pretty much all those prices except for Chuck Norris. He's not available right now. And uh, Hasselhoff is a three hundred buck shot right there. Wow. In himself, wow. yeah. So and uh, who is it? Was Chuck Norris Hasselhoff? Uh, Kerrigan was fifty bucks, so that's that's a steal right there. Going and Flavor Flav was two fifty. Shit! Wow. Jeez. I do love how they left the cameo watermark in those videos. Though. Yeah. 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 <laughs> because most likely they actually did pay cameo. They just went through cameo and just did it. Right. Because you give them what you want to say, so. Yeah, I, I mean, they, they kind of have to to use it. Yeah. Unlike us, who just kind of use whatever we feel like using without any... We're the bad boys, baby. <laughs> Is there anything else from Impact, or are we good? We're rolling. That would be it. All right. So let's jump over into WWE NXT. Matt Michaels, what you got? Best, best show on TV, man. Period. NXT every week delivers. Um, you can't go wrong with. <clears throat> finally, I think you you guys are onto something, Adam Cole. I think you know I said this uh, about two weeks ago. Adam Cole's got to go up. It's time, get him up, and Kyle O'Reilly now becomes the face of that group if they want to keep him. I think actually Roddy and Fish together would be a pretty damn good tag team yeah um and then bring in uh you know have kyle lead it and bring in like a monster you know a bigger guy to be your you know your enforcer um but that that four way was it, i mean it was it was great um i think nxt takeover is shaping up to be another show stealer yeah because, well, uh, go ahead. That, but they have uh, they have a, a return coming, so we'll see who that's going to be. Yeah, that's going to be interesting um, because it's not necessarily specified exactly what they were talking about in terms of who, like this ex champion. Is it the championship? Are they an ex champion from, you know, one of the other shows? Yeah. So. Um, are they an ex champion who was let go, you know, during some of the layoffs and the furloughs and stuff. So, I mean, they, they did a nice little, uh, a little tease on that. Um, better than um, the, uh, the SmackDown teases for what appears to be either Eva Marie or Maurice. So, um, but I think, you know, listen, that, that bow royal to start off the show was solid. Um, I think it's great that um, that some of the younger uh, talent like Emily gets a chance to work TV match, to work a spot with Rhea, you know, to, to um, get a chance to be with some of the seasoned women. That's great. And that was perfect for what they were doing in terms of setting it up. You make Rhea, Rhea still looks strong, you know. That elimination was was awesome with, with her and Gonzalez. Um, I wish they would call her Giant Gonzalez. <laughs> and then make her wear one of those bodysuits like he had to wear. <laughs> that would be fucking awesome. Um, but I think in the end, you know, um, really, if they're smart, Put put the belt on. Put the uh, the the North American title, whatever the fuck they call it. Put it on Gargano. Put the women's title on uh, Candice, and start building that faction. You know, um, she is. You know, when you talk about someone who is a seasoned veteran, 
who normally you, you would be going, man, she hasn't got a shot yet. Um, same thing with Gargano, right? He hasn't got, they haven't brought him up yet, et cetera, et cetera. This is the, the reason NXT works is because when they have people who are solid like Champa and, and, and Gargano and Candice LeRae, they're the foundation of that company. So if you took those guys away, then you have to keep trying to you know build something. You have a cohesiveness to present your TV show with those guys. And that's why I'm leery about more people going from the main roster down to NXT. Because you only have two hours. And you're not, you know, unless you did like a third, you know, like a one hour showcase that's only on the network or something like that. Um, look at how many people you already go Dude, um, uh, fucking uh, Damian Priest again. Guy's on fucking fire, and he was he was good as Punishment Martinez. He was good, but he was just kind of you kind of looked at him like he's kind of an older guy. He's kind of this character's fucking. I mean, the after party shit. <laughs> I mean, just it's you're seeing just why the show is solid. And here's what blows my mind. You can't then take that type of formula and that type of writing up to what Fox and USA are paying you millions of dollars to present. So I, I just, you know, and again, I don't think there's any, you know, listen, if you, if you want to call it a war, whatever. Um, the, the point of it is that between NXT's building of these, you know, characters and storylines and the way they utilize that time, that two hours, there's not a better wrestling show on TV. Anybody else want to mention anything about the show that uh, stood out to him? Uh, he, he covered it all. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, I actually would agree with you in part to one of your main statements that you made, Michaels. Um, I think that it is, you know, some weeks are better on the other show. Some weeks are better on this show, but this week uh, NXT definitely, definitely delivered. Uh, it was the best show on TV on, you know, all of the, uh, among all of the, the brands. Well then let's jump right into AEW Sin City and tell us what your thoughts were on the show. So obviously it was, it was announced uh, that Lance Archer uh, had come into contact with somebody with COVID-19. Um, now, I, I, I thought that that was really kind of um, clunky, the way that they divulged that specific type mm -hmm. of information. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the one thing that is, that is cool is they're being upfront with their audience about the real reason why people are not on the shows. Um, so obviously you had Eddie Kingston subbed into the main event, which, um, I, I think that that was a, that was a really solid move. Um, and they kept Kingston strong by the overall match finish. So it was smart the way that they did it. They didn't have him tap out to anything, you know, they didn't have him, um, you know, lose or like, consciously lose like he passed out to to end the match so um i think that you know that kept him somewhat strong um but again it goes back to and this time obviously it wasn't intentional it wasn't in the plans but somebody debuts a, a decent name debuts and within a month or in this case you know a, two months um he's challenging for the world championship and he loses so I think that um, it's, it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy at this point with AEW. Um, mm -hmm. Whenever they get somebody in there, whether or not they have plans to, um, you know, strap a rocket to them and send them up to the top of the show, um, they, they do it. And it is, it, it's frustrating. Um, but, you know, that, that being said, um, at this point, I could only hope that they would have Miro's trajectory be anywhere near 
where freaking Eddie Kingston's is because that was an absolutely piss poor fucking disappointing debut <laughs> for Miro. Yep, and it just keeps getting worse week by week. What are you talking? Wait, no, you're talking about the match, right, Steve? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about the Lucky match. Just, I think Lucky just took it back to like the debut. No, no, I'm just, no. I'm, 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 I'm already uh, whatever. That's that's the vehicle that they're going to debut him. That's fine. But this match was fucking abhorrent. Yeah. It was, oh my god, dude! So many fucking botched spots. It looked clumsy as shit. Miro definitely looks like he's got ring rust, and it sucks to see. Did you? Were you surprised that? Um, Sunny Kiss messed up that finisher because I've never seen him miss the T bar before. <laughs> <laughs> that that should be his fucking finisher name. Oh that should be his fucking finisher name. Oh, yeah, I think it's back. I think it's back to dark for uh, for Kiss. My yeah. God! My God! She's she's. She's 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 giving her tea bar. She's what the what the fuck, bar. dude? Like that, how, how difficult, difficult how difficult is it for Jim Ross? <laughs> Half of the commentary team calls Sunny Kiss a, a, a she, and then the other part a he. Right. Well, it's not half. It's Jr. <laughs> calling Sunny Kiss she. Yeah, right. The entire Dark. time, and you know I'm okay. I'm not that person to get particular about fucking pronouns. Yeah. I'm not. Okay. But at the end of the day, come on, man. Like yeah. you should, you should at least try to make some sort of an effort. Have the it, proper respect. It give, especially for being a broadcast fucking journalist, just, it, and honestly, to me, it is a respect well, thing. Let me ask you Whether this. Whether it's meant or not, it's, it's unfortunate, but it's a respect thing at that point. Yeah. Do you think um, he's been talked to about oh, that I, I would think so i, I would you i think? would hope so yeah. and and here's the thing is I mean, like what if what if sunny kiss gave him the okay to say it doesn't it, you know however you want to go with it well, if you want to call used to i mean he should fall in line with everybody else well i'm not i'll get oh, that I, I, but what i'm, I'm saying is saying that it's it's one of those things where if that's the case then i you know i would feel better about you know, Sunny Kiss actually addressing that and making making that known, right? Um, because it, I just it, couldn't think that Jr. is just doing that. I mean, he could. I mean, this, by mistake point, all the time. At this but point, it, like, it's it's got to be it's got to be a will issue with him. It's not a you know, it's not a, a knowledge thing. At this point, it has to be a a will issue with mm -hmm. Jr. Has to be. Yeah. Well, I think too. I think what you know, <clears throat> what happens is I think Jr.'s he's just he's watching and he is not it's it's not in his head he just says what he sees and Sonny is a gorgeous man I mean, he really is um not many people could pull off that look in the ring and he really he has a great presence and he just is just one of those guys that you know you want that respect there. JR, you know, I, I don't know. Can you even pull JR aside at this point and say something to him? I personally, and this is, you know, this is maybe it's just the new school of thought, but if I was the owner of the company, I'd say, listen, you know, you've messed up. All right. We get it, but at this point, I need you to be careful because it's disrespectful. And at a certain point, I have to take an action. You know, I mean, defend your employee, basically. Yeah. Now we don't know if Sonny, you know, if Sonny's like, oh, that's fine. You know, I get it. Fine, whatever. But from an outside looking in, what I think is most confusing too is that let's face it if a lot of your audience is that old tnt audience that is traditionally from the south like you know turner was built on you know if you if you're if you're seeing sonny kiss and it took forever to get him really a lot of exposure on tv 
you're already fighting that stereotype. And then to have new eyes just turning in and to be hearing she and he, now it becomes confusing. It, it's just, it's a tough situation in terms of, but I've been saying it for a while, JR, great mind for the business. Mm-hmm. But at this point, man, go back, be at the gorilla position, be giving shit to whoever is your lead announcer, develop someone new at this point, go get one of these guys, get Galley. I mean, you know, someone like that. I mean, there's, you know, Kirsch. I mean, there's, there are good people out there who oh, could yeah. be on a show like this and become the next JR. I agree. I agree entirely. It's, it, it it's painfully obvious at this point that JR just needs to, uh, you know, hang it up. And it pains me to say that. I mean, he, you know, the voice of my childhood and yeah. it, it sucks, but, and I know that we've had, this as a, a three count discussion in the past, but yeah. yeah, it's, it is what it is, man. Any other topics about the show you guys want to throw out? Yeah. Cody returned with black hair, <laughs> which, you know, it was, he's back. You know. I was surprised he didn't get another tattoo on the other side of his neck. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for TV. Um, I thought Isaiah Cassidy cut a good promo on Jericho. Um, you know, you can see Jericho trying to hold it together when he said, you'll be my Le Champion bitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and it, just lastly, one other thing. Um, I'm a fan of Kenny Omega, but him being on TV weekly now has kind of taken some of the shine off of, you know, how he was before this whole thing came about. Go ahead, Steve, please. <laughs> I just lucky. Don't... Lucky. I, I, I really, I really wish I knew sometimes just what the fuck was influencing those little, those little, hamsters or gerbils spinning the fucking wheel up in your head i really wish i knew listen they if they were going to do the cleaner okay because that's where all these things were leading to right just it (laughs) you had no idea what the cleaner was until you fucking stumbled upon someone on the dirt sheets saying the cleaner now that's all you can say is the cleaner (laughs) bro i actually watched him so it's ludicrous that you think I didn't, but I, I just, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed by where this whole thing is going, you know? What, that, they're, that they're taking a long-term booking approach? Ah, I guess. All right. In no, the- uh, no. It, like it's obvious that it's a slow burn and something that they're building at this point. Um, I, I'm glad that quite frankly, we're not seeing Kenny Omega in a wrestling capacity every single week. Um, but I think I think having him as part of the show and, you know, storyline furthering segments, there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that. And in fact, that's what you should be doing because you're you're spiraling him off and sending him on a completely new career path at this point. You need to do that. Otherwise, people won't invest in it. All right. Good points. Plus, you know what they should do? Get JR out of the booth. Put JR with Hangman. And just have those two like always on a fucking bender together. And JR just like stumbling over his words as his manager. You know, oh, that would be great. There so you what go. you're saying is to take the Oklahoma gimmick from WCW <laughs> and make it Jim Ross. Yes. Oh, <laughs> well fucking done, Michaels. Well fucking done. Continuity. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. I guess that's all. He could just keep referring to him as Dr. Death. Dr. Death, tell me, man. (laughs) When you go out there today. (laughs) Oh, shit. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, That's AEW, right? That's it? That's AEW. All right. So I guess with that, we, we've hit the uh, the wrestling. You haven't been watching any obscure wrestling shows, King Lucky, have you? Or, uh, <laughs> Not you obscure. Know? Okay. How obscure are you talking? Because <laughs> yeah. there's a particular genre on a particular hub site that I'm sure that Lucky's a fan of. Oh, uh-huh. sure. <laughs> That'd be, baby. <laughs> At least not All today, right? right? <laughs> That's funny. 
Well, just uh, a little bit of uh, sad news. We did lose a, another um, wrestler this past week, Joe Laurinaitis, WWE Road Warrior Animal. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to let uh, Matt Michaels speak on this uh, some, but I will tell you this. I, you know, watching WWF just back in the day, I got started really, really early. And I just remember, um, you know, watching the, the Road Warriors and, and was huge fans of watching their work in the ring. And, uh you know, it was it was actually pretty uh, sad during the time when they, you know, when they were no longer uh, in the business. As I know, many people had to move on during that time. As a kid, you don't understand that. You know, you just wonder why you don't why your favorite's not on TV anymore. But you knew you you enjoy it when you watched them. And so, um, but just reading a lot of uh, stories about Joe and him being a great father. Uh, and uh, a family man is just uh, really was just sad to hear what happened at the age of 60. Uh, Matt Michaels, if you could just give us just a, a little bit of uh, information on this uh, legend. Well, I think it's interesting to hear your perspective because of the fact that you come from the perspective of purely WWF. Mm -hmm. And for those of us who were of the age where, um, you, you know, when you first got turned on to WWF um, around, you know, 1985, 1986, mm -hmm. you also then saw because of its popularity, then you saw the other, you know, um, whether it be WCCW or AWA or NWA and you sought out the other wrestling, right? And the Road Warriors, um, what you knew them as was the Legion of Doom. You know, right. that, that, that was your, you know, sure. your introduction to them. Um, to us, the Road Warriors were something that was non-existent at all. Um, at that time, the WWF had already had demolition and they already had the comparable tag team that they, you know, brought in in the powers of pain. Mm -hmm. But when the Road Warriors were in the AWA and the NWA, uh, Night of the Skywalkers, I mean, shit, you know, scaffolding matches and, and you know, uh, they were doing all of what was considered um pg hardcore you know the stuff that eventually you know basically everything that went on to be hardcore and, and what japan expanded into the you know the everyday just absurd crazy bloodbaths the road warriors were just these unbelievable mad max characters right that also had paul ellering who was one of those managers unlike a bobby Heen or a jim Cornette, he was someone who was stern solid and you believed instead of being a character it was these guys were real, even though they were over the fucking top in, you know, face paint and, you know, Mad Max idealistic of this, you know, they were the toughest son of a bitches that you could ever imagine as a kid, especially when you got guys like, you know, the Rock and Roll Express and mm -hmm. the Midnight Express and um, the Freebirds and stuff, the Von Erichs. Mm hmm. No one had that. These guys had this just unbelievable presence. By the time they got to the WWF, Vince really capitalized on appealing to taking that cartoon aspect of them and making them a marketable um, product to kids. Mm -hmm. So 
their whole image kind of changed. And by 1992, when they were coming out for SummerSlam, they've got the dummy Rocco now, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. you know, and by that time too, you know, this is when you started getting stories about Mike Hegstrom not being functional that he was either so drunk or doped up or whatever that they had a hard time executing that match in SummerSlam 92 was an example of a match that Hawk was fucked up and they really had to change shit up um which is admirable to Joe's personality because that man stood by Mike through Mm -hmm. everything yeah everything man yeah. And even when they, you know, when companies would try to make each of them single stars, and a lot of them gravitated to trying to make Hawk a single star because he was the one who had, you know, the the what a rush and had that voice and you know was kind of where you could see, okay, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah this guy's gonna be a star. Joe was the solid foundation, sure. and he was the reliable one. He was the one who was there to, you know, take care of him. When Mike passed away, you would have thought that that was it. But Joe comes back, and now they do the Road Warriors. And obviously, they tried it when, um, you know, it was uh, 98, 99. They tried it with draws. Mm-hmm. And it, it wasn't clicking that well. And Mike was still around and it just wasn't working. But when Mike passed away and you brought in Heidenreich, um, and I'll tell you right now, John Heidenreich, having known him in my class when he was green, he was someone who took in a lot, but he was very limited. He wasn't, you didn't see, you know, he wasn't a John Cena. You know, you didn't have all this charisma and stuff. Joe took a guy like John Heidenreich and made him an equal. And actually, they they got the belts, man. Mm -hmm. You can't say anything more to that man's dedication to the business than to be able to in tribute to his former tag team partner, continue the tradition, and help elevate someone else. And, you know, everyone loved the guy. He, you know, he would make appearances, uh, you know, on the different shows over the years uh, for different companies. Um, And then, you know, towards the last, you know, five or so years doing a lot of uh, conventions and independent shows where, you, you know, signings and appearances and that kind of stuff. Every single person who's ever run into him felt the same way and that was you never met a better dude right just a really good guy yeah and on top of that boy you're rooting for his son you know his son in at at ohio state was fucking amazing steve you could appreciate that yep um and you know he had a, a really decent career with the rams and um so you know it's it's amazing how just how talented that family and then of course with uh, John being his brother John Lornice being his brother um, you could never think of two polar opposites of people right you know so it, it's it's just it's sad um, sixty is you know I I think Mike was forty two when he passed away so. You know, to see Animal go at sixty is—it's just a shame. It's—it's it's a little bit of a, you know a shock to know that Paul Ellering is now the only one around from that tradition and lineage. And um, I think in the end, you have two guys who basically influenced no matter who it was who got into wrestling, especially for tag teams from the mid 80s all the way to the early 2000s so 
they basically laid a, br a blueprint that has allowed for all the you know wonderful tag teams that you've seen you know for the last 20 to 30 years um and you know let's let's face it they started they were you know they were bar brawling bouncing you know type of guys man who could party and and uh kick ass and um uh, eventually you know we're gonna go through a lot of these legends passing away and mm -hmm. we're never gonna have that same type of character and persona that they were at a time where you still didn't know that much about the business the curtain wasn't pulled back yet right and if you were a little kid, holy fuck, those guys could scare the shit out of you. Man. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So it's, yeah. it's, it's a loss, but yeah. um, I'll tell you right now, you know, every wrestler out there who put a, a, some kind of tribute up to them, yeah. uh, it all came from the heart. And there were thousands upon thousands of, you know, you just scroll through social media and everyone just was affected in some way by by him absolutely you know and it's even great when you see even you know aew now when they show their tributes because it wasn't like you know that you know he was affiliated in, in many in that organization so uh when you see other wrestling companies do that too they just show the respect that they have for people within the industry and everything so uh as we say gone but not forgotten oh go ahead man and one of the quick things yeah. too that got to realize too the road warriors were one of the outside of bruiser brody and uh abdullah and stan hansen the road warriors were really the first tag team that the japanese fucking audience took to man and mm -hmm. again they opened a whole new fucking door for yeah. american wrestlers to go over to japan Right. Without a doubt. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, we've gotten through our wrestling talk for today. We thank everyone for tuning in and listening. If you are uh, watching our live feed, uh, we, we thank you for watching uh, Facebook Live, Periscope, YouTube, Twitch. We, we appreciate all of you. And if you was on our live uh, feed, uh, comment feed tonight we thank you for that as well and even our listeners right now listening to this on our podcast we thank you for listening and tuning in uh, with that we will be back next week with wrestling talk and until then we'll see you next time